Hey, Matthew here from FiberglassSupply.com. In this video, we're going to introduce you to the epoxy gel time calculator. Epoxies have a rule of thumb that for every 18 degrees Fahrenheit you go up in temperature, it cuts the gel time and the cure time in half. And for every 18 degrees lower you go, it doubles the gel time or the cure time. This is really handy to know because it'll help you pick the right hardener to go with your epoxy or if you bought a hardener in the winter and you're going to go use it in the summer you can use the calculator to know what you should expect for gel times and cure times. It also is helpful because if you want to manipulate the process and have a long gel time and a short cure time you can know how much heat you need to put on it to change things around. So we're going to jump in here real quick so right here we're on the epoxy gel time calculator I'll put a link in the description and at the top it explains what I just told you and a little bit of other things and then we get to the calculator itself so the green cells we can change the data in the green cells and that will auto populate once we hit enter most data sheets are given at 77 so as a default it comes up at 77 but if you're using a Goujon or a West System product most of their data sheets are at 72 degrees gel time in minutes so we're going to jump over to the resin research 2000 ce data sheet because that's one of our most popular epoxy systems and the gel time on the fast is 18 minutes and so that's gel time for 150 gram mass which is about five ounces worth you know so it's a it's a little cup it's pretty significant in volume and we're going to change that to 18 right there so we're here in Washington State and typically you know we're gonna be around 60 to mid 60s with the fast we're gonna have about 36 minutes of polish uh, 30 36 if we're in Southern California and it's 95 degrees out and 95 degrees in our workspace uh, we're gonna be down at nine minutes so you know in that case we may want to go to a slower hardener um, or, you know, we're in Washington and it's around 60 degrees, but we're going to do a, a complicated wet lay, a vacuum bag process, and we just don't think we're going to have enough time to get the vacuum bag on there before the resin starts to gel. Uh, we may want to go with something slower. So we're going to go and take a look at the slow system. The slow system is a 40-minute gel time and a thin film set time of four hours. So we're going to back over here and we're gonna go 40 minutes and 240 minutes for the thin film set okay so now we're looking at that and we say okay that gives us an 80 minute gel time at 60 degrees so that's plenty of time for us to wet the thing out get the vacuum bag on it get it under pressure get the leaks out and and, and be set to go but that's going to mean we've got a, a 480 minute set time. That's a long time to leave the pump on. Um, I want to go home and, and turn the pump off before I go home. So I, what are my options? Well, I've got this table right here in front of me and I can say, you know, if I put a tent around this or I put a heater under the mold, uh, I should be able to get that to 95 degrees pretty easily. And from our experience, that's true. Uh, it's pretty easy to get up to that. Uh, maybe even 113. Well, if I get all my stuff, you know, wet out, under bag, and, you know, ready to go, and I raise that temperature up to 95 degrees, that thing's going to be set in two hours, and I can turn the pump off. Now, a lot of times I will give myself a, a little safety factor there. So I'll say, you know, I can turn the pump off in three hours. It should have been set at two. Or I could say, you know, I can, I think I can get up to 113. If I get up to 113, you know, in an hour, that should be set. So this gives you a tool that you can use as you're working with epoxy to understand how temperature is going to affect it and make a good decision on your hardener and then make a good plan for your strategy in wetting out the part and getting the part cured. So and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, and that's why I really like using this calculator. We use it quite a bit uh, as we're doing projects around the shop. So thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. So.